the American way of drinking, Charles Dickens called it perpendicular drinking. It meant you stood up at the bar rather than sitting at a table. Uh, everyone individual, you want it your way, I want it my way. We're all Americans, nobody can tell us what to do. During the 19th century, everybody drank a lot. There was no aspirin then. There were no other remedies that really worked except for opium. So those were your choices. Uh, alcohol had to stand in for a lot of things. The book that I'm going to be mixing drinks from is uh, Jerry Thomas's Bartender's Guide. It was published in 1862. It was the first book of its kind, the first uh, book to have American cocktails and American drinks in it in any quantity. Uh, beyond that, it was uh, the book that organized the American way of drinking. And, uh, it was enormously popular and enormously influential, and uh, it's still influential today. The first drink I'm going to make is called a Brandy Crusta. It's uh, a drink that first made it into print in Jerry Thomas's book. He found himself in New Orleans in the 1850s, and he got this from a man by the name of Joseph Santini, an Italian immigrant who ran one of the uh, fanciest bars in the South. This is the world's first fancy cocktail. It leads to all the fancy ornamental drinks that, uh, that come afterwards. So the first thing I'm going to do is peel a lemon. You want a nice, thick, long peel because what we're going to do with it is put it in our cocktail glass around the rim. And then I'm going to wet the rim of the glass and maybe the lemon peel with uh, lemon juice and roll it in sugar. This is the uh, fine Italian touch of Santini's here. So uh, to mix the crusta, uh, I'm going to start with some 1840s style cognac, uh, a little stronger than what we have today, uh, a little richer in flavor. In my small mixing glass, they use small glasses for short drinks and big glasses for big drinks. Uh, I'm going to add some Demerara sugar syrup, very rich and sweet. A splash of maraschino liqueur. This is not the same as maraschino cherry juice. It's a very pungent, uh, funky liqueur from uh, northern Italy and Yugoslavia. Add a little bit of lemon juice, which uh, was Santini's great idea in this drink. The recipe calls for a couple dashes. I'm just going to put a half a bar spoon. Uh, because we don't know how much, how much a dash was back then. It's very hard to tell what kind of bottles they were using to dash things from. Uh, but this is just a little bit to take a little bit of the sweet edge off of the drink, not so much as to make it like a, a sour or a sidecar or something like that. And then finally, some dashes of Peychaud's Bitters, a New Orleans brand. It's a New Orleans drink. Get those in there. And uh, now for the ice. I'll use my spoon here because... Uh, Back then, they used to use huge blocks in the bar, and uh, they could cut them down into any size they wanted and uh, shave them. They had ice shavers. They used uh, fine ice for, for stirred drinks and cubed ice for shaken drinks, which, if you do the physics, is actually the best way to do it in, in terms of getting things cold. Let me uh, stir this. Stirring is the great uh, forgotten drink-making skill. OK, I'm going to strain it into the glass now. And there is a Brandy Cresta. It's quite delightful. I'm going to make a sherry cobbler now. This is a drink that uh, was just about the most popular thing in America from about the 1830s when it starts turning up, mid-1830s, on close to the 20th century. This was a world without the popular soft drinks we have today, the mass-marketed soft drinks, and this passed almost for a soft drink. I think the term cobbler in this drink comes from uh, cobblestones, little hailstones of ice, because it was made with little pieces of ice, and it was one of the first uh, popular ice drinks. Uh, it also was the drink that got us uh, drinking with straws. Our teeth uh, weren't the best, necessarily, so we needed a way to keep our teeth away from the ice. Enter the straw. Start with a tall glass. 
Uh, Jerry Thomas calls for two tablespoons of sugar, which I think is a little bit excessive in this. Uh, but again, you know, they didn't, they had a sweet tooth and uh, this is one of the ways of uh, satisfying it. I'm going to use a spoon and a half of superfine sugar, maybe a little less. Uh, a bar spoon's a little smaller than a teaspoon. Next, two wine glasses of sherry. Now a wine glass was a uh, measure back then and it meant a glass like this. Uh, this was before they had jiggers early on. I'm using a dry Amontillado sherry here, very rich and nutty flavored. Two wine glasses full. Give it a little stir to dissolve the sugar. And then just a couple slices of oranges. Cut them in half. Save the better looking one for my garnish. The other one will go in there. And then uh, scoop in some ice. I've got some pebble ice here, some fine ice. Put on my shaker tin. This, uh, this technique of using the tin goes back to the 1840s. We still use it today. It's remarkably successful. Crack it. And then uh, I'm just going to pour it all back in there. A couple nice clean orange slices. Enter the straw. And there you have it, a sherry cobbler. Simple, refreshing, very, very effective. When I go into a bar and I'm in the mood to drink a cocktail, I always check uh, a couple things. First, I look behind the bar and see what the stock is. And then uh, I listen to the shake. If it's a quick up and down once or twice, I probably order a beer. But if it's a good, thorough, hard shake and uh, you really get the sense the bartender is working, then I'm a lot more willing to give things a try. I'm going to start with my silver shaker here because uh, this one needs some serious shaking. So I'm going to up the ante, put a couple, two big heaping bar spoons of sugar because uh, this one, you know, it's eggnog. It should be sweet. You just get the water in there, a little water to dissolve the sugar. Now I'm going to crack an egg in here, a whole egg. It is an eggnog after all. Next, booze. A wine glass full of cognac. I would recommend, uh, if you're making this for yourself, you might not want to put quite so much booze in this, because this ends up being as strong as a double martini. We're going to use a nice English style rum, some, bar some dark Barbados rum, a little bit of funk to it. Uh, he calls for a a pony glass, a half of a wine glass. Finally, milk, a third of a tumbler. Uh, we'll use a wine glass and a half. It's hard to tell how much a tumbler is, so uh, we'll use about three ounces of milk in there. Ice. Cover the shaker. This you need to shake very hard. Then we're going to strain it into our glass. Another silver strainer there. Finally, we need to garnish it with some nutmeg on top. Always grated fresh. And there we have an amazing glass of eggnog. You might not want to have more than one of these. And grandma, you might not even want to give her a whole one. Depends on your grandma. 
I have to try this. Damn, that's good. One of the bartender's greatest tricks was tossing drinks. I used to think the movie Cocktail was completely bogus with all that flair bartending, and I, I thought I was very much above that. But then the more I studied American bartending, the more I realized what an integral part that is. Back in the day, they would toss the drinks back and forth over their heads between two tumblers. Nobody can figure that out anymore. It's a lost art. The Blue Blazer is uh, something Jerry Thomas uh, claimed that he invented, and as far as I can tell, he did. It's basically a, a hot scotch, which was a common drink of the time, set on fire. The drink begins very simply. A little bit of sugar in each, a chip of lemon peel. Our glasses are prepared. And then the silver mugs. So at this point, we're going to have to dim the lights uh, so you can see why it's called a Blue Blazer. To start with boiling water, cask strength scotch whiskey, using a nice Islay whiskey, very smoky, get that out of the way because it is flammable. And then aerate it. Nice, even pour. Be sure that the handles are pointing straight away from you and you're pouring from the side. Otherwise, you will burn your knuckles. All right, I'm going to pour these flaming into the cups. Blue blazers. For most of the 20th century, the old uh, bartender's craft as practiced by Jerry Thomas and his contemporaries was very much an eclipse in America and in most of the world, frankly. But uh, going into the 21st century, this art has come back. A, a bar is still a free and easy place. You have more freedom than you do in any other place in American life.